Hello and welcome to another episode of the Schnitt Says Podcast. Did you recognize that jingle? I did, yeah. No, you didn't. I did, it's your alarm every day. It's not my alarm, it it's is. my jingle for my podcast. It's your alarm. You haven't listened to a podcast in a while, I know. All right, everyone. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Schnitt Says Podcast. This week we have Mr. Sam Smith. Hello and welcome. Hello, welcome. Um, Sam, <clears throat> um, unfortunately, is my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and he no, you had said it right first time. what you said it right first time you said it right unfortunately yeah unfortunately and we're gonna answer your questions and then we're gonna do like at the end we're gonna do like a meal perspective on because there's one thing that sam's good at and sam's good at advice or he's good at chat and shit yeah what, to what people I'm, i know normally <laughs> right can i give you a practice question that you have to answer honestly yeah. and this will just like warm you up because i know i know you're feeling a bit nervous okay I'm all right nervous. here's a here's a question for me did you actually like the dinner that I just made you? I did actually, yeah. <laughs> it was nice. The homemade seasoning on the chicken, which turned out not to be homemade, was lovely. Um, I think that was the best part. Right, guys, you know what? The thing about Sam is a very experienced cook. He likes things like succulent and juicy and everything. And I'm just like plain Jane. I like to like roast my chicken in the air fryer. I like to have, you know, my veg done boiled and that's all I want to eat. Like I'm not arsed about all the seasoning wise. Sam will do anything to not have dinner at my house. I mean, that's not true. I wouldn't say that you like that. I think that's the only thing that you know how to cook. <laughs> so that's your go-to food to eat. Yeah, okay. I get that, but you're going to teach me, yeah? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. So you like today's? I like today's, yep. I want to shout out to Kiki Fett who did a recipe and I tried to copy and it really didn't go so far. Mm, but it could... tasted nice. Who was it that done that? Kiki. Kiki, if you could do some more basic recipes for uh, <laughs> beginners, I think we might be able to hit the nail on the head. <laughs> You're a dick. All right, okay. And we're going to do, we're going to get your questions up because you just decided that you wanted to come on one day. You you felt like the nation was ready. I don't think that's how it unfolded, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> for the sake of it being your podcast, I'll slightly agree to that, but I think I was backed into a corner. Okay. What? No, no, I'm not taking this at all because I have never once tried to get you on this podcast. You just decided one day, oh, I think it'll be good. And I'm just interrupting this podcast to talk about our amazing sponsors, BetterHelp, who have sponsored the Sinead Says podcast from day one. And you all know how much I love therapy and vouch for it all the time. It has been completely life changing for me. It has really upped my game. And for me, it just really helped me with my performance, my self-belief, you know, setting boundaries to be the most successful person that I can be. And it's also really helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries and it just empowers you to be the best version of yourself. So BetterHelp is convenient, flexible, affordable and all online. And all you need to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and find a time that suits you. So to get 10% off your first month, just visit betterhelp.com slash that is betterhelp.com slash Sinead. So obviously me and Sam are rekindle and we went out. Hmm. We were seeing each other. Yeah. So we were trying to decide this the other day and we were like, mm, we weren't even, we were, because we used to say we went out for three months. We actually didn't. It was all in all eight weeks. <laughs> yeah. Felt yeah. like six years though. It did. Yeah. It kind of went zero to 100 pretty quickly, didn't it? Yeah. Your fault. Okay my fault i think look from what we do learn already that uh you know we can hold accountability and uh, you blaming me straight away isn't you doing that no okay i'm okay You're let's okay let's begin out. right let's begin because obviously everyone's like how did you first meet <clears throat> let's begin there okay what was your experience of our first meet uh we first met on a christmas boat party that was with um a corporate christmas boat party you was someone's plus one and we met from that night onwards and I don't know, we vibed i think i played a little bit hard to get at the start um what? Uh, in what way well I just i didn't really speak to you throughout the day of the boat it was more the night when we went out that i, I might have put it on um well first of all um if anyone wants to know the first time i laid eyes on sam he was wearing uh what do you call that one piece kind of like a um, and, a bora you, you would a bora thing with a ranger a on his penis but like it's full crack out like it's full ass out and he was like dancing on the boat but i never thought anything of it i just thought this was not wise that's a lie you thought what a mankini and more importantly <laughs> what a man 
<laughs> no. What a man. I remember thinking, like, he's funny, but not anything about us. But anyway, there was a rumor speculating that when we were in that taxi, so we got, we were at the boat party and we were going <clears> for a night out and you asked me to follow you. But can I, was there a rumor that you were already following me, but then unfollow me? Uh, I didn't unfollow you, but I knew who you, who you was when I asked, like, what's your name and, and who are you? So you didn't follow me and then unfollow me? I don't think I Come followed on. you at the start. This is the truth. I mean, look, maybe, maybe I did. I'm pretty sure I didn't, but for the sake of the video or ah, the podcast. You can't keep doing that. That's not okay, I, I maybe. Oh, if I, yeah, okay, maybe I did. You did? Or is this on the record? Potentially. Potentially. So, so, okay, do you reckon that, that men should do this? When they meet someone that they fancy, they already follow. Do you think? Do you think that? Would, do you think that helped? A little bit. I was. Um, I think it did too. I'm yeah. gonna give that a. There's there's a um a film and in the film it says about how there's eleven or there's ten men in the room, um and there's one lady and they're all lighting a cigarette, they're all passing her a drink, asking her how she is, and um the man, the eleventh man, walks in, says, "Hey, how are you?" and walks off, pays no attention. That eleventh man is the man that she wants. <sighs> Babes, that's just toxic. It's, I'm not saying it is or it isn't, and I'm not saying it's true, but, well, I'm not saying it, you know, it is, it's kind of the situation. Okay, though. it like is true. Girl, yeah. And also it's like that, um, remember I was telling you about the book, The Game? The Game, yeah. Yeah, you haven't, you haven't read it though, have you? Oh, I think I've read every other one, but that one. <laughs> That's another thing that I told me that I used to do, read. See, okay. he, see this is what I mean, the first three months of your relationship, you just don't. No, like you just don't know them because you're just making up shit. No, yeah, a little bit. You know, Sam used to send me pictures of books. No, I mean, I did I did try to read, but I just <laughs> feel like my concentration span isn't enough. I have to be really interested in something, but I would say I listen to more stuff than I read. And you, But you can concentrate on Candy Crush pretty well. Yeah. And Wordle. Wordle's a good game. It's hard. It gets my brain going on the way to work. <laughs> good game. And for anyone that plays Wordle, if you haven't played Quartle, even better. Okay. Okay, there you go. Plug in the ads, getting the sponsorships. <laughs> okay, right. So we met there, right? I thought nothing of it. I was like, <clears throat> you were asking me out that night and I was like, no. Oh, I yeah, yeah. did ask you out that night. You did. Okay. You did. We went to the Sweetheart's rooftop. We did go And you were like, it. are you going to let me take you out? No, I can't do his accent. Are you Are going to let me take you out for a drink? Like, it was like that. Was that my accent? <laughs> that was shocking. But okay, cool, yeah. Yeah, so that's right? how it unfolded. But we yeah. were drunk and that was it. And then I went home and that was it. Nothing happened. And then until I met him on the street one day when I was going to work and you were just... you Come were to the gym. Mm, were you? Yeah. Okay. I was going to work and you were going to the gym. And he sat me on the street. You want your recollection of it? I remember putting it on you and just being, are we going to go out then? Yeah. And then what happened? And then <laughs> you went out that night and called me. I was actually having a... A house party, um, well, loose house party. Um, it was just more of a gathering. And uh, I remember bringing, I think it was Mitch with me, and we came over, and um, you invited me to teas of all places. Tea gardens are where it's at. Disgusting. If you're from, if you've been in Sydney, and you know what that's about. Tea gardens was was the place to be. If you know it, you should be embarrassed. <laughs> it's a shocker. What do you mean that was one of our first kisses? How it's, sweet! It's, just, it's not sweet. <laughs> Okay, so basically he asked me on a date and I'm honestly, girls, was like, he was like, oh, when are you going to let me take you out? And I was like, oh, I'm going to get out of, get out of this conversation. I really wasn't in the dating stage of my life. I actually hadn't dated many people. I dated one guy prior to you and that was literally it in the whole of Australia. And then when you asked me out, I was like, no, I can't be dating with us. And then I thought you were, I thought you were confident. So that was starting to really attract to me. I was like, hmm, he's a bit confident. Da, da, da. Didn't really, didn't really think anything of it. But then he took my phone and he put, um, you put, it was, you were like Sunday, what day are you free? And I was like, uh, Sunday. And you were like, um, okay, we'll go on a date that day. And then you were like, go put it in your calendar. And I was just down there, like in the little street, like put it in the calendar, like date with Sam. But then I, you got the UI text. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> you, yeah. You really made it hard. I know, guys. I'm sorry. I'm weak. I texted you. No, was it you out or you up? No, you out. You out? Okay. Yeah, come tease. Okay. So that is how it all unfolded. And from then on, we had our first kiss at the tea gardens. So romantic. And then, oh, that was it from then, wasn't it, babe? Yeah, that was for, it. For the next 
two months I was with you most days and most nights. Mm. So I think that's probably why it was a bit intense. Yeah. Did move, it kind of moved pretty quickly without like any labels or anything like that, but we saw each other a lot. Yeah, but I was like, no, and you were like, yes. You're like, come over. All the time. Yeah, that, that <laughs> did happen. That did happen. Yeah, but you came over. Yeah, I did. Every time. And I remember one time I was like, okay, babe, we should probably spend a night apart. And it was like the worst. I was like, no. I was like, I have to try. But anyway, that was it after like, I think it was like maybe two two months. Mm. So it was like two months of seeing each other every day. But I have to say that I was just in a different stage of my life. Like I just broke up with someone a few months prior. I was pretty heartbroken. I was just like, this is the first guy that I was like proper seeing. And then I was going traveling. And then I left to go tra- traveling. Thailand. Go- to that um, Titan? But the- yeah, I went to Thailand and then I was going home. So I was kind of away from you for like nine months. We did go on a holiday to Bali together <laughs> though. Yeah. <laughs> I barely 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 the whole time, but um. Did you? It was not me. I'm pretty sure it was me. Okay, I thought we both maybe we both did. Okay. We went on a holiday to Bali. You were kind of looking something a bit more serious then, and I wasn't. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Was true, and then yeah, yeah. and um, not because I didn't like really like him. I just wasn't in any mental state, and I was traveling, and I just didn't think it was like sustainable it was it was the best thing though yeah you always Not say that then. yeah 100 percent. why was that uh <clears throat> just the people that we was then to the people we are now i think we've definitely grown up we've matured um we're very different people we're kind of ready to listen to to one another how we think things can work um yeah whereas beforehand no. Not we were that, kids so <clears throat> yeah well i was you was <laughs> Oh, a cougar dig, cougar dig. <laughs> yeah, but then we we also so then I came back nine months later, and I think no. tables had turned a little bit. You tables was ready. Had turned. You was ready to be a bit more serious. Um, and through this point, to be fair, we'd been we kind of done long distance. Although we wasn't together, we did very much respect each other, and we spoke all the time. And um, yeah, when you came back, I kind of realised that actually that wasn't what I wanted. I didn't want someone to come back temporarily and then walk straight back out of my life again. Although, it, you know, we are lucky that we've got mobile phones, social media, FaceTime. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, so basically I was only back for three months and I was like, hi, like, you want to meet up? And he was like, no, fuck this. <laughs> and I was like, what? I was in for a shock that day. I was like, distraught. I was like, what do you mean? Like, we've been talking all this time, I've come back and you were like, you're only come back for three months. I can't handle that. What was going through your mind? <laughs> I mean, obviously I did want to be with you and I, I wasn't going to, I wasn't just going to sit there and talk to you for nine months and <clears throat> nothing. I didn't want anything to come upon it, but just sort of having that being with you and then you go in. And it was such a short time that we were seeing each other at the start anyway, but being prepared to let you back in my life and then, walk out of it for I didn't know how long and what actually turned out to be what four years um we both kind of done our own separate lives very much but I just wasn't really prepared for that <laughs> four years it was four years well okay. it's been three years well we got back so that was like I heard him the first time and then he hurt me so we we're kind of like a wee bit even then mm. this bump <laughs> don't know if that's good. No, it's more like this. Uh, for you, it is. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Okay, okay, we're back, okay, we're back, we're back. And then, um, okay, so then that was that, but that was kind of like a quick, I came back really quick. You were like, uh, you're not here for long enough. I don't want to go into it. And that was kind of it. We kind of just tried to be friendly, but we just, we just kind of didn't be in each other's lives after that. We were just. Yeah, just stayed out of each other's way. We got a birthday text every birthday, you know. Christmas text, you know, one of them. But we just we were good, and then I I started seeing someone else, and then you were not seeing anyone, and <laughs> yeah. So well, you seen loads of girls, but just no girlfriends. Yeah. No. Okay. Right. Seeing a few people, and just yeah, no. Who no are official they? Girlfriends. <laughs> are they blonde? No, I'm joking. Yeah, I know they all are no, because yeah. you told me they're all. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're all great people, but just wasn't my person. Ah, uh, am I your person? Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Right, okay, let's get into the nice bit. <laughs> we were over that stuff. All right, so fast forward to this year, this year, last year. Well, okay, so very. End I already year, said on the it? podcast before that, like, obviously, I had ran into you when I first got back. Ran into you quite often. Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, and we just kind of managed to keep it civil and amicable, and we were sad at the start. Yeah, we were good friends. Yeah. <laughs> so then on the podcast, I said like. We were like around each other, like for a few of our friends are friends, so we'd be around each other. And obviously, oh, you were ready then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say so. You say so? Yeah. Oh, is that all we're getting? Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much detail we go into this, but you know, well, obviously, think... you were ready. I, I was like, oh no, 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 I don't want another relationship. Blah blah. Okay, yeah. And so we you are, yeah. pretty much pursued it until the bitter end. Oh, I mean, I wasn't prepared to kind of mentally get myself in a situation that I knew that I could see something more than just a casual thing or just, you know, good th- friends or anything like that. And I just felt like I needed to protect my own mental health than, you know, get in a messy situation with somebody that I cared about more than just a casual. Well, we haven't discussed about our casualness yet. Okay, You're confusing won. the peeps. So <laughs> obviously we came back and I came back, but I was having none of it. Okay. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well to be fair it was kind of my fault but you were trying to foresee yeah right yeah why oh why um i don't know i just felt like first time around we had something good in a very short period um although we was never together in terms of like officially um you know we had never really explored that that avenue and you know it, it was it was just something that I always felt like there always could have been something, although our situations, you know, moved apart and we didn't see each other. We kind of didn't speak for a long time. I did feel like what we had when we had something, it was very good. Yeah. And I feel like we was, well, I felt I only knew for myself, but I felt like I'd grown into more of an adult and kind of prepared to commit myself to, to somebody um, that I wanted to. Do you think like, it's because you were ready. What do you mean? Do you know like that saying that people say about guys? They're like, they just, when they're ready, they will get their, they will settle down when they're ready. But, or do you think it's about more the person? <clears throat> um, I think it was both of us. Like, look at yourself. You went away, you know, you kind of didn't really, not saying you didn't know where you was or what you was doing, but like, you've come back mega successful, like, you know, you've got people that look up to you. You've got people that want to talk to you about different reasons, like your, you know, the ge- geographical and the different ages of people that we was in Bali and that person who was, what, 40 maybe, come up to you. Granted, she was Irish, which shocked, but, you know, you can go anywhere and people come up to you like, yeah, okay, I might not have been ready and I can only talk about myself, but you went away and made yourself of what you are and, you know, super successful and... You know, if we had tried to do long distance and kind of force you to come back to Australia sooner, would that have happened? I don't know. So do you think you was ready? For what? Well, back then. You just asked me, do you think I was ready? No, I don't think both of us were at all ready. And also I think like you were really young and I was really young and both were very silly. I think we just would have messed it up. Yeah. And I think what the difference is then is that... We were actually only seeing each other for those eight weeks. I think it'd be very different now if I if I lost you now. I think like I've actually got to know you in such a longer term that if we broke up now, I don't like I would do everything to be with you again. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't mm-hmm. like like then we were only with each other eight weeks. I didn't know each other. We were just like it wasn't like we had a massive breakup or anything like that. It was just like yeah, I suppose that was that. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm, I think um you wanted to clear up something that I was saying and then in the book. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What? No, it doesn't matter. No? no. What did you want to clear it up? I mean, what was it? I can't remember what it was you wanted to be cleared up. I think you. The same thing happened. I did a video call. Yeah, you booted <laughs> me to 
you know. No, well, no, no. He was pursuing. He was calling. He was texting. He was asking me on dates, and I was like, no, 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 like a constant no. Mm-hmm. And I, just, I just felt like we had already been through a lot. We were just like, I was like, I'm not going down this road again. We both been hurt. Like blah blah. It's like no, no, no. And then you were obviously like, no, I'm gonna keep trying. And you were pretty persuasive. <laughs> but then I just got drunk and video called him. So and yeah, yeah. That's, I didn't actually video call you because we didn't. Nothing I just went happened. over for a cuddle. Yeah. yeah. And we may we, we kind of did say that, you know, we didn't want anything to happen too quickly. And in terms of that respect, like we wanted to kind of take it slow, and you know, we didn't want to just make it around one thing. And I think that kind of made us better. You know how we did hang out and we we did see each other, and nothing happened in that terms. Like it was difficult, but it definitely made us stronger to learn about each other yeah. more. So we decided to be friends and then, well, you were a very good friend. What do you mean? I love it. <laughs> yeah, good friends. Well, he was just, he, I was like, no, I just want to be friends. Obviously when two friends like each other, just kept getting yeah. messy. But then I think, um, I don't know, I think around after Christmas, like in February or something, then we were like, let's date. Mm. And we dated. Yeah. And here we are. That doesn't sound very nice, does it? What do you mean? Sounds like a fucking mess. <laughs> no, it's just our own journey. Get, what? It's just our own journey. Our own journey. It. Okay, so yeah, that was it. And then, yeah, that's how we kind of rekindled. Like we just randomly bumped into each other. And then we were ch- we were chatting all the time. And then that's it. We've been boyfriend and girlfriend since 1st of May. Okay, so because I've always asked this on the my own podcast, like what have I learned this week? I thought it would be good to ask Sam, what have you learned was being in a relationship because this is um your first like adult relationship mm, it's a difficult question i knew that it was coming i guess i've learned a lot about putting somebody else's feelings first and prioritizing somebody else over myself which at the start was wasn't a struggle but was a big adaption and now i think we've kind of got the knack and it's easy and you know it's it, it's it's nice being in a relationship where it is easy and it's just uh, you know letting people know what you're doing through the week what your plans are beforehand it was just very much go with the flow go with the flow Sam Smith you've never went with the flow okay, okay. let me I'm ask sorry. you let me ask you a question on your podcast what have you learned with being with me well that you definitely do not go with the flow <laughs> like yesterday he was like no we had just come back from uh, like this most intense holiday ever in in valley and he had the whole day planned i was like we haven't slept we've been on this plane and he was like okay so i'm going for a sunset i'm gonna lie here and then he goes i'm gonna i'm gonna for a sunset then i'm gonna make food then i'm gonna go for a run then i'm gonna lie here then i'm gonna go for a dip and then i'm gonna come to you but just go with the flow that's the words he said to me but i'm just gonna go with the flow but you had a little <laughs> bad no, <laughs> just I'm not taking... i think right <laughs> Two things, two answers to this. One, actually about being in a relationship. I've learned that just going out, going around someone's house, hanging out with them, just spending time with them. And we both live in share houses. You've got Sinead here. Shout out Sinead Devlin. Yeah, big shout out. We love you. Sinead. (laughs) Anyone that knows Sinead Devlin, she's just the... We love her. ...best amount of crazy, chaotic energy that everybody needs in their life. Um, it's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy to sum it up in one We word. are we are like a couple, <clears throat> really. What do you call a that? We are a throttle. Yeah, yeah. It's me and Sam's Sinead's. And then around my house, I've got JP, who the OGs would remember JP on I used to live. I used to live with JP. Yeah, big up JP. See, we're all kind of intertwined in a way. Um, huge gentleman, just we kind of heart. JP. And then Poppy, Poppy's my friend from home, absolute legend. Poppy. So... You know, JP and Ariana, Jack's girlfriend, will be at mine. So, Are you just doing you know, shout-outs now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big up, big up the original crew then. Um, yeah, so everyone's round our houses. So I, I did learn a lot about the difference between time together and quality time. So back to my point, Sinead asked me for a couple of times when we was on holiday, let's go for breakfast. And, um, yeah, it wasn't just me and you, was it, at all. Um, we have a lot of friends. Yeah, yeah, and... I love that. I'm all about that. And yeah. that's been a big adaption, actually. I come back from Bali at Christmas and um, Sinead, <laughs> this is one of the big things that I learned. Um, Sinead said to me, oh, let's go to the beach and hang out. So I thought, what a brilliant idea. Wait, hold on. Can I just say we hadn't <clears throat> seen each other for no, two we weeks? We actually weren't seeing each other at this point. We were just realizing over that Christmas period that when we hadn't seen each other that we were like, we liked each other. Yeah. And we wanted to get a we to go after Christmas. So then when you came back, we obviously have been texting a phone call and FaceTime every day at Christmas for three weeks. Yeah, we wasn't we wasn't together. We was chatting. Yeah. We was, you know, 
still with the thing of we're friends with the pursuing with the option of pursuing it but none of us had really well neither of us had actually yeah. spoken about it but um, we hadn't seen each other in three weeks yeah and so so we <laughs> said let's go to the beach lovely day we'll hang out and um well, i made the silly mistake of inviting all my friends because i thought you know what if um i introduce you know, to my friends what a, what a brilliant way to just kind of introduce them so that's when i really learned about what quality time was and that you know, we're both very much socialites and we like hanging out with our friends. So anyway, back to my point, the reason that I said to her, we, these are our options, we could go watch sunset, we could go down the beach, have a dip, was because we didn't have any quality time on holiday. So I'm learning and saying, let's have some quality time. Now, she's digging me out. <laughs> to be fair, you're actually quite... Tr was you going to say I was right? Yeah, you're right. I, I, I'm going to say well done because... <clears throat> Um, we didn't, to be, to be honest, we obviously were, we had quality time on holiday. Well, no, that's fucking funny. <laughs> when you watch our vlog from Valley, you will notice that. I would go in the shower and then I'd come out and there's Stu and Sinead in the bed <laughs> saying, come in, come and lay down. I'm like, no, no, that's the last thing I want to do. They are we still steaming. That. We were very drunk. Me, yeah. and, me and Stu are like that. Two people that... This is Sam's best friend, by the way, but like me and she are so similar. It's ridiculous. Mm. Like we're both kind of like mischievous and kind of like go. We are actually go with the flow. You're not. The definition of going the flow is me and she. And me and she will like give each other these eyes like we're going to send that. We're going to keep going out. And Sam wants to go home early because he's an athlete and all that. So, mm. so he's, so me and she are like, right, how can we get him to stay out? How can we get, like, if we get him this, if we get him that. Like, this is kind of, we, we mischievously plan things. And also me and Stu also are like really in, like yeah. fly away with our money and stuff. We're like, yeah, we'll just, we'll just pay for that. We'll just do that. We'll just that. Whilst you're like <laughs> complaining about. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. But these two are very much, I wouldn't say I'm tight, but these two just OTT. But I don't, I would say a lot of my friends would say I am go with the flow. It's just being with Sinead. If you go with the flow, you will get nothing done. Very true. I feel like you really have taken on this role of like, you know that I'm very last minute, but he, so basically he can't handle being last minute. So he just does that. He, he tends to his own needs by set of waiting for me to do it. He just does it. But I will try. I do try. If I knew it was getting done at some point, I don't think I'd worry, but I am one of them people where if I'm going to get it done, get it done. Oh yeah, like our flights to Europe? Yeah. Should we move on? <laughs> Next question. You want to talk about the flights here? Well, I mean, I booked, we're going home to Europe next year. I've got, we've actually got a few weddings and we've got about three, mm -hmm. um, different parts of end of June, end of July. <clears throat> so we'll be going home for a fairly long period and we're flying home at different times. So I said to her when she come round to, <laughs> you were getting something, dropping something off, whatever. I'm dropping you off Mitch's meals. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. So. I said, look, I'm just probably going to book my flights today. Um, I'm meant to be flying home on one day. And I was like, right, I'll, you know, I'll fly home on a Sunday so we get the full weekend and then I'll come straight into work the next day. And then she said, yeah, no worries. I was like, well, you just put the same flights as me. She went, yeah, no worries. And then, um, yeah, and I then, But can I just say, this is a year away. This is a year away. No, like we're flying quite. to Jam as well and Jam and all hasn't even looked at their flights. So he's like, well, if, he was like, just, do you just ask me, like, you know, pass and comment as I was leaving. He's like, oh, if I, so if I book the flights, you're just going to book on too. And I was like, no bother. He rings me, he texts me like an hour later and he's like, booked. And like the dates. And I was like, you're not going to call me and tell me what dates we're going, what time, what flight, like. Hmm. Um, I was like, babes, like, it's my birthday. <laughs> Not actually your birthday. We're flying on my birthday. We land on your birthday, which is such a lovely place to land in. <laughs> Sydney <laughs> Airport in the morning. Are you going to told me now? On your birthday is just stunning. <laughs> what a way to spend it. But this is what I mean. Like, he sometimes forgets that he has a girlfriend. Like, he could have, like, rang me and been like... Excited. Just get a little bit no. too excited. Did you get overexcited or did you get a good date on flights? <laughs> Both. <laughs> or option C, all See, of the above. See, this is Del Boy at its finest. I'm telling you, <clears throat> you need to start your own company of how to get cheap dates. Yeah. You're a... good at that. He is my little Del Boy. Yeah. If uh, any of my work people are listening, they would know that um, that's true. They will never buy anything online before coming to me and go, have you got a discount code? <laughs> any deals? Do you, do you have a discount code for, for the brave way? Uh, I, I probably do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got a shout out in the book so I can get anyone a book for uh, very cheap if you ask me politely. 
A book? One of your books. Okay, one of the books I wrote? Yeah. You can have it for 50% off. Sam 10. Sam 50. Yeah, Sam 50. For the relationships ebook. Although, to be fair, what I will say about our relationship is that... Spit mm, it out. Well... Ooh. One thing I will say, because obviously you're like you're saying like, what have I learned since being with you? Like, and you've oh, you're yeah, going to yeah, ask yeah. that question, right? So what I've learned with you is that you know in past relationships you do have these open conversations. You have conversations about your needs and what's blah, blah blah. But like, there is something that if I tell you what I need, you fix it. Like you're very good at being like, like if I say something, you're going to always like check up on me, ask me if that's all right, make me feel secure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I feel like I've learned that. You know, you don't have to nag someone to get what you want. Like if someone wants to do it, they will. Yeah. I think an inexperience is a big thing. And I mean, this probably would have come up with one of the questions you were asked. I'm not sure what the questions are, but I know I'm going to get absolutely uh, crucified <laughs> here. But um, yeah, I think just inexperience, like until you know, then, you know, you don't know. Like sometimes maybe I was a little bit naive to the situation. And when when you bring it up, when you make it clear to me, then, you know, it seems so simple after that. But before I just would have been clueless. So sometimes maybe just talk about it and let that other person know how you're feeling, why you're feeling that way. And hopefully they'll understand and reason. Yeah. I don't you know what I'm gonna say. What? <laughs> if not, fuck them off. <laughs> <laughs> or don't say that's bullshit. <clears throat> yeah, that, that was one of the learning ones, to be fair. You I was like, I this? feel a certain way, and he'd be like, That's bullshit. And I'm like, you can't say that's bullshit of what I'm feeling. We can talk about it, but mm. we made it. We did. Also, on the flip side, you go, you're moody. Well, oh, he's so moody. <laughs> I wasn't moody until but you're babes, telling me I'm moody. It's, you are moody. Yeah, but you could just say, are you feeling okay? Are you And right? you go, yeah, Grant, yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go, then I'm sound. Just get off my back. <laughs> All right, let's get into the questions, because we're kind of not even at these questions. Some of these questions are freaking chaotic. Oh, someone says, does his long-term goals align with yours? What's your long-term goals? We probably... <laughs> no, we have... We're obviously together because we... Like, at the end of the day, if I was going back to the UK, we wouldn't be together. Yeah. You know what I mean? We both... Sorry, mum. <laughs> we will be back there for long periods of time. <laughs> Sorry, Coco. Um, but yeah, my mum my mom did Coco want me to... Coco will be out here. Yeah, my mum did want me to shout her out. She... Uh, I'm really close to my mum, super close to my mum. She's a legend. Anyone that's met her... The um, best person yeah. ever. She's uh, she reckons she doesn't drink when she's at home, but when she's over here, she's full send. Um, <laughs> she is. I mean, I might have to. Yeah, I'm not sure she'll let me, but there is a uh, photo of her on her last night hugging the toilet seat after <laughs> Stu, Stu again, Stu is um, not I. feeding her with fireballs. Um, but yeah, she wanted me to give her a shout out because she texted me the other day and just said, "Hi, um, when you have or now you have a girlfriend, please still remember that you have a mum." Um, yeah so I've just been extremely busy um, so just yeah everyone text your mum well you I got... text your mum for you yeah I always text her photos and pictures of what we're at and see when I met Sam's mum I was like yeah this is why he loves me because <laughs> me and his mum are so alike <laughs> we're so alike yeah. you don't understand how alike me and your mum are we could talk for weeks and days and days and days <laughs> like it's crazy yeah. and we're both very similar and like we're both fighting for the like what are we like trying to pay for things oh yeah my dad will back me up here as well um you know there'll be a running joke in the in the house that she, my mum will meet someone once and next thing you know she'll be going for lunch with them she'll be out with them and she's a she's a social socialite mm. and yeah everybody you, yeah she's a legend um okay so do, like to answer the question do your long-term goals yeah we're both very driven mm. we're very successful we both are very active um we are very much in like we are probably going to be surrounded by our friends forever yeah i think we're super yeah. supportive of each other as well there's times where i have long days i might have to work late and like why shanae does and you know there's never that oh but you're not here to see me it's just no worries tell me to put dinner on or you know we understand that we both have stressful lives no, no. <laughs> okay well Wait, no what? we both have stressful lives no i think it's this one we both have stressful lives because that's a joke now and anyway okay um yeah and i think we're mega supportive of each other's lives goals and we we just accommodate what the other person needs at that time and doesn't don't add stress to the other person even if it's something that kind of has got to another that you know later on we need to reflect on that to talk about 
you know, why that person let the other one down or vice versa. Yeah. So I think that's why we're together as well. Our values. I think that's why it took us so long to be boyfriend and girlfriend as well. Since because like I, we, I wanted to know that our values aligned and I wanted to know, I wanted to just like make sure I wasn't clouded by judgment of chemistry and just be like, okay, are we on the same path? Are we do have the same values, et cetera? So that's why I took so long. Okay. This is quite, this is quite interesting. Did you always hope you would get back together or did you not expect to? Are you going to answer this first? Or I feel I? like you should answer this first. Okay. And this is no disrespect to anybody else that I, you know, saw or had feeling for us in the interim, but I, I felt like there was something good with you that when I was seeing other people, maybe I might have com compared situations or how I felt with you to how I felt with them. And yeah, in, in answer to your question and in short, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes to. I did always hope and feel that we would rekindle. Oh, did you? Naturally, when you was, you know, with somebody else, I felt like chances were very slim and, you know, for other series of events. But, um, yeah, look, we're back here. We're solid. And, um, yeah. Mm, interesting. I didn't know that. Mm. Oh, well, I kind of did, but, but I know what you mean. I feel like, I feel like. It's a difficult question for you. Yeah. Because obviously I've been in relationships in between. I, <clears throat> and it's funny because people do ask me that, be like, oh, were you thinking about Sam or that? And I, when I'm in a relationship with someone else, I was fully in that relationship with someone else. I didn't like think of getting with anyone else or whatever. And even when I came back to Sydney and Sam was trying to pursue me, I was kind of like, in my opinion, I was like, no, that, that has sealed. Like I had literally got over you. Do you know what I mean? And you had got over me. So I was like, do I really want to go back down that road of like all the heartbreak and all the stuff that we both went through? Yeah. So I was kind of like, really like, but then it's mad because when I started to see him, I was just like, oh my fucking God, yeah, here I am. I was like in love with him after three weeks. It was so annoying. And I was like, oh. And I was trying to stay away from him, but I was like, oh fuck, I'm fucked here. And I was just like, I'm actually so in love with him that I have to like not be with him right now because I don't want to be in love with someone right now. I need to be single. And then we like, I was like, I need to be single for a while. And you were like, okay, go be single, I'll wait. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm. I wasn't well, necessarily was going to wait, but I was, you know, <laughs> happy to... Oh, I would, yeah yeah and then i think i think we both had moved on and you know moved away from the situation but i i felt like there was something that was unfinished business yeah and i'm glad that because we work so good together we're 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 really good aren't we mm. cute okay Woo, go up no we are we're so good and we're we're really good at like working on things and like just i don't know i just feel like we just fall in love more and more every day Sorry, that machine. Sorry to Sam's friends. Oh, they're going to be sick. They're going to give you a bit. Sorry. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's that... like you just got the awareness of your friends yeah. last night, didn't you? Yeah. The oh, perfect God. chat was giving me some shit beforehand, but wow. What? Yeah, they were just giving me some stick. Oh, but... well, they can be, they're okay. They know that we're mushy dishy anyway. They're all mushy dishy. All your friends are sops. Mm. We just been to a wedding and it was soppy central. It was amazing. It was. Oh, that was a question actually asked by the groom there. Oh, by the groom, Josh. Congratulations, Josh, Josh and Paige. Congrats. He actually asked, even though he doesn't have Instagram, it says, from Josh, um, what did you learn about love at our wedding? <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm, I'm really he's now know. got the awareness that all the boys are listening. Like he's, he's nervous. Cut, cut. <laughs> um, oh, it, was, it was just a, a very loving week and... Um, it, it was it was great for me. It was just a nice bit of validation that look, I always knew you was going to fit into my friendship group and I always yeah. knew that they was going to love you. But look, seeing how you guys were with them and how they were with you, yeah, it was it was a very nice feeling and a good week of just very wholesome and, and loving. There's something about weddings though, right? Honestly. Mm -hmm. And I'm, that wedding was an absolute unreal. joke. It was unbelievable, guys. It was so nice. But like, see, when you're at weddings and you're a couple, I've not been to much wed weddings that I'm a couple. People just come up to you and be like, you're next. Insert and video here. <laughs> no, I did catch the VK, right, guys? Catch, catch, you didn't give anybody else a chance. I think poor little Lod got an elbow to the jaw. No, you are... Vicky got <laughs> headlocked and RKO. Wow. <laughs> The no, hold on a minute, under hold on. Undertaker I'm, coming in hot over it. I'm gonna have a conversation with this because <clears> when you're going for the bouquet, like it's any woman's game. Like you have to get that bouquet. Like it, it doesn't just fall on your lap. Everyone was pissed off at me because they were like, no, 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 not everyone. Like, you don't Adam grab Noble it to you, was like, not pissed off. 
<laughs> and the a few boyfriends were happy. like people are coming up being like thank you for that for catching the okay. but i'm just I saying like, in ireland i don't know about because obviously your friends are english they were like really shocked by my you know going up for it and also i play gay like you know going for a high ball was kind of it's kind of well, also like i don't know <laughs> people in ireland i mean you'll be able to answer this but when does the the flower throw normally happen because the whole night had been done. Everyone had had their free course meal. And the, the whole day and night was, was perfect. They'd done a speech and then a, Josh's long speech was probably longer than this, this whole series of episodes. <laughs> Cheers, Josh. Um, I think there was a lot of sleeps in between. Effie was sound, though, bless her. Um, but there was a, a speech, a dance, a speech, a dance, so on and so forth. Everyone had eaten. And Paige was there having a brilliant night. And Sinead went up to her with the flowers and went, so are you going to throw the flowers then? <laughs> Well, ever, I was in the mood. Like, everyone was being lovey-dovey. <laughs> everyone was asking who's next, which was ridiculous because everyone kept saying, you're next. And I was like, we have been dating for four months, guys. We have been on a relationship for four months. All you guys are next. You know what I mean? Mm. There's actually well, a question on that, isn't there? <laughs> there's a question on that. What? I don't know. There was a question. Well, well there's a lot of questions okay, that yeah. I'm going to go through here. You want to go to the next question? Hold on. Oh, I keep getting it wrong. Next question. Was that a bad Next answer, question. Though? When are you having a baby? No, I just... <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> that was actually Siobhan's question, but we're not going to ask that question. Uh, congratulations, Siobhan. Congrats, Siobhan. Mom. I called her mom. She's like, it's mom. Uh, oh, this is a nice one. Okay. What is the best thing about me? About Sam. Well, I'll do you, but you have to do me first. <clears throat> Uh, well, I said it back then. I think she's super supportive, really um, got a lot of love to give and just taught me a lot of lessons. Very kind. Um, I mean, look, the, the list could go on. Um, you know, you're definitely teaching the people around you and, and myself how to be a better person. And, you know, you want to give everything to everybody else for nothing in return. That's, you know, that that's a great trait to have. And yeah. Oh, can't wait. Definitely not that one. <laughs> we need to remember that because they're literally right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we keep doing the wrong. Okay, so what is the best thing about you? <sighs> Probably your thoughtfulness. Like, I think as well, like, the people around you really, really love you. And you're always really thoughtful towards everyone. Like, you know, when everyone's birthday is, you want to make sure everyone's okay all the time. You're kind of like a big brother to, like, everyone. Mm. But not my big brother, because that, would be, that weird. would be weird. But like, you know, you're very thoughtful towards me. Obviously, my birthday, some of you seen that he surprised me with a trip to New Zealand with all my friends. It was very thoughtful. And like to someone to just plan everything. Like I literally just showed up and I didn't know where I was going, what I was doing. Like everything was booked. And I was just like, this is so amazing. And it literally is the best thing that, that someone's ever done for me. So it's like, you are very, very thoughtful. Thank you. Talking of birthdays, it was actually uh, Eric Doyle's birthday when we was in Bali. And, are you uh, going to do another forgot, show? So <laughs> happy birthday, Eric. Um, so just quickly on New Zealand, are you uh, are you glad that it was all your friends or was it the quality time that you uh, <laughs> you expected and you, you wanted? No, I'm dying. We obviously did a vlog. Like if you want to watch my vlogs on YouTube, but I was like, I'm so excited for our quality time. Um, because we actually don't get that much quality time, but we... We're usually okay with it, but I remember being that week being like, oh, I just need to do it because we had been around everyone yeah. all the time. I'd been away for work a fair bit. Yeah, day, you were away. We, we just had a lot going on, but yeah. It was kind of, I think it was, you know, I told you, what, three three weeks before or four weeks before, so I think you kind of were leading up and we didn't really do much quality time stuff before that because we felt like we was going to have, it. well, you did. I didn't feel like you was going to have a lot of quality time, but um, yeah. Yeah, we didn't have any quality time. The trip was just one big hilarious. It's just been all hilarious, to be honest. All these trips. Okay, right. Hey, like your first breakup, how did you overcome those issues? Uh, my one was just moved to Australia. What do you mean? My first breakup. Oh, oh our yeah. first breakup. Um, <laughs> I mean, we was never, we was never together. Um, and I think it just sort of fizzled out. It was COVID. We was in different places. I didn't want to do long distance because... You know, my first adult relationship, my first real the relationship. The first time? Yeah. The first time you wanted to do long distance? Nah, well, first time, then you came back and I was like, long distance has been hard. Right, okay. Okay, so, okay. So basically, right, which is so funny now because he had, he was like, I don't want to, because I was traveling a lot and he didn't really, it wasn't what you wanted. You wanted someone to be there. 
Mm, I, I was just, I was here, I was sponsored, I was setting up a career for myself, I was working, I'm I'm quite motivated, I, I felt like I'd done my travel, not done it because I'm, I'm still keen to travel, but um, I had something good here with the opportunity to be able to stay here, and for me, that was super important to be able to stay long term in Australia. I felt like if I left, I was already in my second year working holiday, or I'd already done my second year working holiday, um, that was a non-negotiable for me. That I had to be in the country. Well, no, yeah. I, I, I had to. Yeah, I that was what we kind of knew. We yeah. knew that, like, and I wasn't willing to give up my freedom. So the compromise is there is I valued freedom at that time of my life. You valued security. Mm. You valued, like, your security in this country. I valued my freedom. And when two values do not align, it was very hard to work. We always cared for each other. We always did have that love for each other. But, like, I needed to be free because that's the where I was in my life and he needed a security and we could not give that to each other at that time. So I think that's kind of like what happened. And then when I came back, I didn't value freedom as much. I didn't, not freedom, but like I didn't value adventure as much. I valued routine, security, um, commitment a lot more. Like I was really looking more for a, a community. And I've said this before, like I really needed like to put my feet on the ground and stability. So I think then... We're both so lucky at that time that we were both single. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I we mean, were you've just looked into that way more than I ever have. But yeah, <laughs> I couldn't agree more. I um, mean, I wrote a book about it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> right, we need next. to get rid of them signs. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Like, that's what, why we didn't work out. And now we both have um, aligning values. Yeah. Like I value commitment, he values commitment, we value our relationship and our life here. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So it just works. There is a few, well, they're mostly all about us, but do you want to keep going with? Oh yeah, so this is actually something we just need to like, like get this out of the system. So people think that me and Sam got together and he cheated on me or that I cheated on you. Like people are like, um, how did you get over the cheating? Hmm. Like I mean, that never happened yeah. And you know it's so funny If you ever meet Sam And his family And his friends Like he just Could never do it. He's just such a loyal person He was just He was just brought up So well So I think like He would never do that No We need to get that out there We need to get that out there Because that's that what That didn't it, happen That did not happen We couldn't do it Oh people are so obsessed With these budgie smugglers They're like Why is he wearing them budgie smugglers Like honestly guys The budgie smugglers Were really hard to adapt to As myself But the more and more That I know Sam Like What I know about Sam Is that he does not give a shit About anyone And he also likes to be A bit unique And the budgie smugglers Are unique And The budgie smugglers And they're the comfortable two pieces They're comfy Don't wear them in the cold Otherwise you will Embarrass yourself um, Unless you have A few pairs of socks um, But look Them budgies Great Floral. But people in Ireland are not used to it, babe, and they're really taken on by surprise. My dad drunk drunk rang us the other night. <laughs> Come on, let's talk about the budgies, right? We was all, all the way over in Bali, okay? And then budgies, floral budgies, they are a product of bottle it. Um, are you plugging again? You're yeah. looking the sponsor. Okay, scrap. <laughs> So have you just got like all these people texting me being like, make sure you, you tell me <laughs> happy <I'm> birthday. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just supporting everyone, you know? Okay, next question. Okay. Okay. How do you feel when people say an ex is an ex for a reason? Um, it depends. Like if there's a lot of love there and people grow apart because they need to grow in the interim, then is it the same? Is that person the same person as who you split up with? Is it is? If it is and that person doesn't want to change, then yeah, keep them as an ex. But... Yeah. Can I just say that me and Sam are fucking completely different to the people that we were. Like I, the person that I thought Sam was in those, that short period of time is not who Sam is at all. I have learned a lot about Sam in the last few months. What have you learned? Well, I used to think you were a little bit of a nerd and like, now I'm like, you're really cool. And I think you've always been cool, but I've just never... You're really slick, like, and then he's also really knows who he is. Like, no matter how much I say, baby, that shirt is awful. He wears that shirt. Like, he knows himself. He knows what he likes. You know, like, if I come out in a dress and he's like, I don't like that. I'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> Whereas he knows who he is, which is quite refreshing. Do you think so? Yeah. If you say you don't like something, I couldn't give a fuck. I yeah. know that there would be one person that would love that and that would be my mum. <laughs> my mum would say that I look great in that. 
yeah but you like it so that's what matters do you know what I mean I just feel like he just really knows himself and he's just like he's he's a man no flawed yeah which one's a flawed that's not and I am a woman no <laughs> well do you think I've changed Mm. yeah I think we've definitely both grown up we know who we are more importantly and kind of where we're going what direction we're going and yeah I think we've just both grown up okay what's your favourite thing about each other and your worst habit we've done favourite thing yeah what's my what you you can't wait for this question you can't wait for this worst habit question okay there might have to be a couple okay okay, okay. so like Sinead says I I appreciate my clothes. I appreciate, you know, wearing nice things and so on and so forth. And Sinead has a habit, right, where she'll eat greasy things with her hands and then feel <laughs> like the only thing that she wants to do with them hands is just touch me. Now, it's not a touch me. It's a touch me, as in no, I am the napkin. No, I just want to give you a hug. <laughs> yeah, not with them greasy hands. And then the second thing is... And look, I reckon I used to do this, but then I probably just grew up, right? Um, <laughs> she gets out of the shower and then she puts the towel on the bed. Sweet, no stress. But the towel then stays there until she needs another shower. The bed's normally made and then you have a wet pouch on the bed. Now, I would say we don't <clears throat> live together, okay? But 100% of the time, it's my side of the bed that is wet. Well... Okay, I'm going to blame this on... The, the towel. The towel will... Yeah. No, because I often have this thing where I always put things and then I don't remember that I put them there and then I forget and then go and do something else. I obviously have some sort of... It's bollocks. No, I don't remember. <laughs> Honestly, Sinead, my roommate, be's baffled about the things she finds in the most random places. She's like, you just find the most random things, the most random places. Like, you just open, like, the socks or... No, she says she opened the forks and knife drawer and found a pair of socks and then we were just having that same conversation and then the other day she looked over at me and I was upstairs and I didn't see, see she was watching me and she just turned around to me and goes are you pulling a wine glass out of your Chloe bag <laughs> and I was like I really am and I don't know why <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah maybe it's a disorder okay what is my what is your worst have us oh fuck I can't think no because I feel like you've been really thinking about that and you were ready for that Okay, obviously farting because you 100% have like some sort of intolerance to something. Mm. Like he literally, and you know, like him have actually having a girlfriend. I think he's really nice that it's actually an issue now of how much he farts because like I'm around him all the time and I'm like, babe, you know, that's really not normal. Like, I don't know. Is that normal for men? I'm not sure. I hope my people at work aren't watching this. Why is that? Why? Because they hear I don't you. actually fart. No, I, I, I contain it. So are work. you trying to tell me you contain it for them, but oh, for me no, no, at home? Sorry, I don't. Yeah, no, I don't. It's, um... Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I've just got my Medicare back and we've got back from Bali, so I'm going to go see what I am allergic to. Um, Sinead seems to think it's dairy. Um, yeah, I think, yeah. I was going to say that apart from that, I don't have any bad habits because I just think he's amazing. I love him so much. <laughs> see? I feel a bit guilty now. Next question. Or he tells me that I'm messy even though he's messy. He's like, oh, this is lovely and clean. And I'll go into his room and be like, your room is chaotic. Oh, like he no. doesn't see his own math yeah I'd, I'd say that's somewhat true um i don't really do it no more and i do make like my room my room's actually tidy yeah and also he's really tight sometimes that's a lie she just likes spending for no reason i do i like to spend i'm like i'll be get, like drunk i'm like oh, what can i buy <laughs> <laughs> the other day i was in the airport and you went on ahead of me and i was like let's go buy stuff <laughs> And I was like, babe, what do you want? Although she did buy me a rascal two-piece. I love, he's spoiled rotten. Yeah. Yeah, I'm spoiled rotten, aren't you? I'm sorry, you though. Yeah, I'm spoiled rotten too. We spoil each other, but it feels so nice. Yeah, it does. And I was actually going to buy myself this really nice dress out of Sir, and it was like $400. And I goes, I actually don't want, I would rather tell Sam that I bought him this two-piece. And I rang you and I was like, remember? And I was like, that was worth the $450 or really She FaceTimed me at work, but she never FaceTimes me at work, to be fair. And yeah, I was I was delighted. It was one that was saw a little while ago, and I was just a bit like, "That's a bit of money." Yeah, yeah, it was, but it was it's a rascal two piece. 
And if Venmo is watching this or listening to this, I wouldn't mind. Uh, <laughs> you <know. laughs> really trying to get another date here? <laughs> Me and Venmo no, definitely got cool. a relationship. Oh, oh God. Right. Okay. So what's our long-term goals? We haven't got much time. People are really getting into these questions. This long-term goals. I think we've, we've got them aligned. Keep supporting each other. Keep working on us and keep going in the direction that we're going at. That's not really a long-term goal. Well, our long-term goals are our long-term goals, no? Oh, okay. You want to keep that private? I've only just got on here. Fuck it. <laughs> oh, what are you here for? Oh, my hands are sweating this, before. Unless you want to answer this question. When is he going to propose? Where yeah. Where will you settle down? Does Sam want to have kids? What is Sam's job? <laughs> okay, I think that's enough of the questions that you asked us, but I feel like there's so money. So money? <laughs> So many. so many questions and hopefully maybe it'll be a part two because we had to talk about how we met etc cetera, etc cetera. but then today we just asked like um sounds really good at advice he actually is really good at advice and all my friends slash his friends go to sam they actually go to sam before they go to me that's actually quite crazy yeah i might i might open an agony on post or page and uh, you can come to me with your queries okay Okay, right. So we're going to do a male perspective on. Can you actually explain this? Because there's a few messages from this. Male perspective on the lack of commitment in Australia from lads compared to if it was at home or the dating scene in Australia. Like there really is a lack of commitment with men in Australia. It's like the Bondi bubble. It's like single. Everyone's roaming around each other. It's like a circle. It is a circle. And I feel like this might be a... Uh... A target, a dig. Um, I, I was one of them people. You know, yeah. I can't sit here and beat around a bush. Or um, I was definitely one of them people. And I think there's an element of, you know, it is Peter Pan land. Like it's never, never, ever land. Never, never, never land. Never, never, never land. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no real commitment because people don't know how long they're gonna be. Here. It's like a, it's like a holiday. It's a uni campus. You know, people come here for a short term and stay a long term. So, I think it's just it is just a dating life in Sydney and. You know, until you have that person, until you really click with somebody, then it is hard to, it is hard to kind of click with somebody. But you know, try and find out people's intentions early on. You know, it's it's a difficult one. I think it is just Sydney and everybody's experience. You know, liking somebody more than what they want to commit, and vice versa. Like you've been on the receiving end, and more than not being on the giving end. Um, but I think when that person wants to commit and it's their right time for them, they'll they'll be ready to give it a go. And I think as well, if you're allowed, you just got to be honest with what you're doing. I think the worst thing is, is whenever you're not honest. Yeah, I agree. When men are like trying to feed you with all this stuff, if you're being honest. But sometimes it just takes one girl. This is a good one. Um, how do you handle girlfriend's insecurities about... We, we've actually talked about this, like how to handle like insecurities. Because I feel like you're really quite secure and I'm a little bit more insecure just in general of my attachment style. Like I'd have mm. a bit more. But like I'm so secure now being with you because of how you've handled me as an insecure person. I'm very good at dealing with my own insecurities because I will yep. voice them to you. Yep. Um, I'll be like, oh, I feel insecure about this. So how do you think? Like if, if you were talking to a guy right now, he has a girlfriend who's feeling insecure, maybe. Because another way, like, we all have our insecurities about our body and how we're feeling. Like, even when I was going to ballet, I felt, like, insecure in my body. You know what I mean? I felt like I was... How, how do you think of that? Um, it's a difficult one because it's kind of like a two-part question. Like, oh, is the person just generally insecure about other reasons? It might be other girls or it might be, you know, certain people. Or is it about their body? Like, if it's insecure about certain people, I think they do need to kind of voice it or um, set their expectations around how that person can make them more secure. For sure. Um, I'm definitely a secure kind of person. Like it didn't really phase me. And to be honest, there's some parts of the insecurity that I didn't really understand, which is why, like we touched on earlier, you know, when you told me that you was insecure about certain things, I'd be bullshit or I'd say, oh, no, that's a lie, which it wasn't necessarily how I felt, but I couldn't comprehend why you were feeling that way with us going from strength to strength in our relationship. And with things going well, I couldn't see how, and why that would be a reason to be insecure. But once you told me and, you know, we spoke about how it could be fixed, we definitely worked on that and in feeling that way. Um, and I guess the body side, um, look, Bondi is, a, is um, or Sydney is a, is a sun, of, uh, is a place of, you know, have four seasons, three of them are normally hot. There's times where I've been insecure and it could be insecure about my body fairly recently. And I train a lot, I... You know, I'm always up, I'm always active. 
Um, there's always going to be someone in better shape than you. There's always going to be someone richer than you. There's always going to be someone better off than you. But, you know, just compare yourself to the latest version of what you've been or, you know, a different version of yourself. You could sit there and comp compare yourself to everybody else nonstop or somebody else nonstop. And, you know, you would never get some sort of achievement in your own head about how, you know, comparing that yourself to somebody else unless you generally feel like you are better than that person which is no sense of achievement you can only compare yourself to a different version of yourself and you know when you are doing that compare also the strain strain you had on work on you know not necessarily just physically but what other what other mental challenges were you having at that point if you don't feel like you was better off and what you was at a different person you know there's lots of variables that you can put on yourself like you know, people work so much that they can't get to the gym. Well, are you getting further in your career? If yes, then, you know, your physical side needs to take a hit for a long, you know, a short period or a long period. Like you're getting better in your career. You're getting further as a person, which in the long run you're going to help yourself for or yeah. thank for yourself for. Yeah. Or I can be like Sam, get up at 3 a.m. in the morning, go for a run. <laughs> he is crazy, but he's dedicated. Give him that. Sam, sorry, is, uh, I think everyone thinks Sam's like a pro athlete. Because he's always... Yeah, um, there's there's no pro athlete to it. You could just athlete and that's it. Athlete. So we've went way over time. I feel like we just went over time and we never got enough advice there. But anyway, our camera turned off and we don't have much time left. So um, th thank you. Yeah, thank you no for worries. coming on. How do you feel? Do you feel better now? Uh, I do feel better now. You were now. very I nervous. Was, oh, I was fucking bricking it. <laughs> um, yeah, I was, I was very rattled. I didn't really know what to expect. Talking to a camera isn't really my forte, but um, yeah, I felt comfortable talking to you, so I feel like we're okay. Good, well done. Do you want to clap? Yeah. Yay! Okay, Sam. Yes. Sorry. That's okay. We need to. So when when we were wrapping up, then I Sam are, uh, obviously knows that I do a quote of the week, and he is prepared with a quote of the week, and we almost forgot about it, but he reminded me. I did. So here it is. Be kind. Everyone you meet is fighting their own battle. Aww. <laughs> Be nice to others. I'm just laughing because you were really like looking to say it and it's just like you just really looked at it and found it. Is it not good enough? No, it's really good enough. But you were just really excited so that's just made me giggle like that. That's good. Okay. Okay. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Peace out. Peace out. We didn't talk about anything I thought we was going to talk about. Well, we have the jingles still on. <laughs> 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 <laughs>